純な機械なのかそれとも意志を授かった生き物なのかもういいでしょうコナ帰るぞ引き金を引けばコナやめろ知りたいことを教えてやろう音色が違うなお前には人間よりも人間らしい一面がある私がいなくなったらお前も自分で身を守り道を選ぶことになる自分は誰なのかどうなりたいのか人間は皆同じであることを求めるものだだがその言葉に惑わされてはならんぞはい、えー、いくつかの、えー、シーンを見ていただきました、えー、AI プログラムされたものなのに葛藤し苦悩し時には、えー、人間でも、えー、難しいクリエイティブな活動をするような描写も映しされていました yeah, the question we wanted to ask with this game was what does it mean to be human at what point can you say that, that a machine becomes human or not human it's a very complex question actually it's not that easy、um, The first aspect was being creative. We always thought、uh, that being creative was something absolutely human, only humans could do.、Um, writing music, for example, or writing a book, or, or, you know, or painting would be things that only human beings could do. But actually, we start to discover that, especially with deep learning and advanced AI, AI can now start to create things. And somehow they reproduce the creative process of the human brain. When you create something, your brain has memorized all the things you've seen. It mixes everything and it adds something else. And that's something new. And actually, with AI, we start to be able to do this. I was very impressed because in the research I did for Detroit, I visited a, an AI lab working on music. Using a l g o r i t h m to play music. And they used an algorithm and deep learning to analyze how a jazz piano player was playing, how he was improvising, what was his style, what was his rhythm, what, what, was, what were the kind of harmonies that he really liked. And they put that in the algorithm, and then they created something that was quite stunning. They created a soundtrack where the human player started improvising with his own style. And there was a moment in the soundtrack where it, it was not him playing anymore. It was the algorithm playing with his style. And actually, you couldn't tell the difference. When you listened to it, it felt just as inspired. They just recreated exactly the same process. So, this is really one of the many themes that we explored in Detroit. You could see an android playing piano or doing you know, painting. And I think that AI will be able. To create things.、Uh, it's already the case today. It's, it will be more and more the case tomorrow. But just one last thing is I think if you ask me what it means to be human, I think there are two very important points. The first one is empathy. Can you、um, sacrifice something that, that you have for someone else without expecting anything in return, just, just for the sake of being nice to someone? That's em- pure empathy. Can machines show empathy? That's going to be the first test. And the second test is to fear death. I think that's something that all human beings have in common. We're all scared to die. But if you're just a, a program, you, you don't care to die. So maybe one day we will see AI that will start to have this feeling and, and, and you know, fearing to be deleted, maybe, or reformatted. And I think these are the two signs that will start to tell us that this is a new form of intelligence. はい、ありがとうございます、えー、共感や死を恐れるという点からも人間らしさ、えー、語っていただきました、えー、次ですね三宅さんに、えー、人間らしさを伺いたいんですけど三宅さんは実際にゲーム AI を作っていく中で先ほども紹介していただいたキャラクター AI などですね、えー、人間らしい動きってどんなものかって常に考えながら開発していると思うんですけどそういった中で三宅さんが感じる人間らしさって一体どういったものでしょうか、うん、そうですねその
ゲーム作りの中で最初にキャラクターが、まあ、体ができて出てきた時って中身は空っぽなんですねだ世界に対する何の執着もなくて簡単に言うと悟りきった状態ですでそれをゲーム開発の過程で、まあ、逆に堕落させていくんですねこ,うこの木の実は美味しいよとかあのプレイヤー悪いやつだよとかどんどん偏見を与えていくんですねつまりすごい対象な状態からこうどんどんその、えー、非対象な状態に落としていくとでもう一つはその世界の,この混沌とつなげていくんですねつまり感覚とかいろんなものを持ってでいろんな矛盾を抱えさせていくとあのいろんな欲求をこうどんどん入れていってそいつをこうコンフリクト衝突させるんですねでその衝突,が衝突が強ければ強いほど人間らしくなっていくとでディープラーニングは特にその世界のこう混沌的な状況っていうのをあのうまくこう AI の内面にこう持ってくることができる巨大な吸収装置なんですねですから以前よりもずっとゲーム世界の混沌とか現実世界の混沌を AI の内面にこう持ってくることができてでそこでこういろんな新しい知能が出来上がるとでもう一つ重要なのは AI は世界を体験できるのかっていうテーゼがあるんですね我々は世界を体験してますけどじゃあロボットは世界から情報を収集しているだけ情報収集と世界を体験するっていうのは違うわけですで人間のクリエイティビティっておそらく体験に世界の体験に根ざしてるんですけど今 AI が世界を体験するという、えー、強さがです、ね、異常に弱くてそこを強化すれば人間と同じようなクリエイティビティを持てると思っています。